Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast. My name is Hannah and I'm back again. It's actually about one month since I last recorded, but I did a couple of pre-recorded episodes, so if you have been watching, you've probably um, seen me more recently than a month ago. Um, But I feel like I have not done this for a little while, so we'll see how we go today. (laughs) This is episode 14. And I'm recording today on the 7th of August, uh, 2015. Um, oh, what do I normally say? I almost forgot. You can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram. There is a group on Ravelry and you can find it just by searching for Rose Hip Knits Podcast. And we're actually close to 100 members on the group now, which is very exciting. Um, and it's fantastic, yes. So I should start with saying thank you. Thank you to everybody who's watching. If you're new, if you've been watching for a while, thank you for being here with me and um, sharing some of my knitting and other things with me. As I said, it's been about a month since I last recorded. I have been traveling. I have been Um, back to Sweden where I'm from and visited family and went on some little trips with my husband and a few trips with my children as well. I am now back in northern Tasmania where I live and where I have lived for about 10 years or so. And um, yes, I'll tell you a bit more about the traveling later on in the episode and it will probably sort of appear here and there when I when I talk about my knitting and other things. Uh, more thank yous. When I've been away I have had um, several very nice messages so thank you for those. I realised when I came home catching up with podcasts which I haven't really been able to watch much in the last month that um, my podcast was mentioned on Ichigo Abroad podcast. I'm not sure how you pronounce that but Yes, um, Saratoga Knitting, and I think her name is Lisa, but I'm sorry if that's incorrect. But um, she did mention the Travel Along Cow that we have been going, that has been going on in um, the Ravelry group, and it's now closed, and I'll um, get back to that later. But yes, she mentioned the podcast, which was very nice. And then I had a message from Christina, who is Chrissa on Ravelry, and she said she had mentioned um, this podcast in her podcast, and she sent me a link, and I had a look at that. And um, yes, that was a very nice podcast, and I watched that episode when she mentioned um, me in this podcast, and thank you for doing that. And I am now just waiting for some time when I can watch her other episodes. So her podcast is called Christina's Knitting Catch-Up. So yes, I have a few more episodes of that to watch and um, I'm really looking forward to that because it was a very nice watch. And um, yes, I did a lot of hand dyeing before I went away because I did go to a market um, that that my mum was attending with some of her crafts. So I did a lot of dyeing before and I talked a lot about dyeing in my last episodes and I had so many nice um, comments on my hand dyed and I put some pictures up on Instagram and I had several lovely comments on that so thank you. And I'm sure there's more thank yous that I should add here and I just have not been catching up with podcasts and messages um, completely yet. I only just got back day before yesterday and um, yes I have been drowning in um, washing and just getting organized and now it looks like my youngest has um, caught a bug or she's just not feeling 100% today so she's sleeping at the moment just outside in the pram took me quite a while to get her to sleep and she hasn't really been up at all today and it's now like 11 in the morning so 
We'll see how we go, how long she'll sleep for, and I hope she feels much better when she wakes up. So, I'll um, talk about some of the knitting I've been doing when I've been away, and um, what I finished, what I'm working on, what I'm planning to do next, things like that. I have a few skeins that I purchased when I was away, not lots, but I might show you those. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit more about what we did when we were away. So we had a travel along cow and that um, finished on the 31st of July and I was still back in Sweden then. So about midday on August 1st, I thought it will now, ha July will now be finished everywhere for everyone to be able to enter up until the end. So I locked the threads and I had all the names and posts written down on little notes and I recorded doing the drawing and um, oh insert that little video now and I will reveal the winners, winners sorry, for both the FOs and the works in progress. So now for the recording with the winners. So, congratulations for the finished object prize, Amy um, Le Manche Mama, who is in Germany. Your package uh, is still in Sweden with my mum, all put together with your name on it and everything. And as soon as you send me a message with your postal address, I'll get mum to send that out to you. And congratu congratulations, Mina, um, who is Mina86, I think, and um, also the host of their Knitting Expat video podcast. Congratulations to Works in Progress um, Prize, Mina. Your package is also ready and waiting in Sweden with my mum, so as soon as I have your postal address, I'll get that to her and you'll have a prize package coming your way. I did post uh, pictures of the whole price package um, on the Ravelry thread if anyone's interested to have a look. I had prices donated by my mum and her husband that they made themselves and I did get a few little extra bits and pieces uh, to put in the price packages. So I hope um, you will enjoy the prices, Amy and Mina. So yeah, it was great fun to um, host this um, knit along and I hope you all had fun and um, yes watching all the um, knitting that was happening out and about was fantastic I do think that socks are, are up there with the most popular uh, knitting projects to take with you when you go places and I think that's the same for me and, and this um, trip really did show me that that's just the easiest thing to both to bring with you and to sort of be able to with your brain when you're out and things are 
happening. It's just the easiest thing to knit on and uh, I love socks anyway. So next up I think we'll do the dye along but I'll um, think a bit about it and come up with some details and maybe next episode I'll um, let you know about our next along which will be the dye along. So here we go. Before I went away I had one project that I was not able to show you because it was a test knit and I was not able um, to show it because it was not um, released, the pattern was not released and that was this little vest, Ria Vest by Maria of Stitched in Sweden podcast. Um, I wanted to complete it before we went away but I just ran out of time so I had this with me and that was my knitting that I worked most on for the first week or so away. I made this out of the Novita bamboo and on Ravelry they call it the old Novita bamboo so I don't know if there's a new version of it. It's 68% um, bamboo and 32% cotton and it's a little bit sort of stronger green than it's coming up on my screen here and I actually got mum to sew in the buttons and they're they sort of have a greenish colour in them, which you can't see there, but they go really well with the vest. This is the 18 month size, and my daughter did wear it a couple of times in Sweden over a dress, which was really nice. And I think I have a photo of that, and um, if I'll do, I'll insert it here. So that's that vest. Um, it's 275 millimeter of needles I used for that. It was really nice, neat, and as I told you in my last episode, if you watched um, me showing off baby knits, baby knits, I really like vests for babies and toddlers. They're just really, really useful. So that's the first thing that I finished. The second thing, and that's what I worked on most of the time when I was away, are these socks. These are just plain vanilla socks with an afterthought heel. I did them top down, put the scrap yarn in, and after I had the toe done, I just went back and did the afterthought heel, just the same way that I did the toe. This is a yarn that I dyed quite a while ago and uh, it's a pattern nail four ply, Peyton's pattern nail four ply that I over dyed. It was just a white skein and it's so nice and soft. I really like this yarn. So I worked on them when I was away and um, Quite a lot of the knitting on them I did when um, my husband and I we had a few days um, in Riga in Latvia and we didn't have the children with us they were uh, with my mum so even though we did go out a lot and we did go and look at so many things and went out eating and just walking around we did have quite well we did have some downtime in the hotel just resting in between things and um, Yes, it was just a nice time to relax and do some knitting. So I did do some knitting then and also waiting for for the plane and on the aeroplane I was able to do some knitting which I'm not normally able to do because we have the children with us and just travelling with children just does not give you any opportunity to knit at all. So I got quite a bit done on those and finished them soon after. And these are 56 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter needle, which is what I normally do. So that's them, and I really like them. And um, it was so funny because at the market um, that I went to with my mum when I sold some of my hand dyed yarn, I was knitting on these. I had um, a bit left on the second sock when I was at the market. So I was just standing there and knitting on them and 
I had so many comments on the socks and how I was knitting them and I, have, I had ladies come up to me and wanted me to basically write up the pattern on how to make them because it just looked different to how they normally make them. Just I think it was the afterthought heel that confused them about the construction. They were not really able to just get their head around how it worked. So I did have to explain several times how I made the socks. But that was fun. <laughs> Standing there um, trying to uh, sell my hand dyed, I thought really I should just um, have a class on sock knitting instead. I'll have more people interested in that than buying yarn probably. But the yarn also did really well at the market. So it was just fun with the socks. And um, nice to talk to lots of people about knitting. So those are the two things that I mainly worked on when I was away and that I finished. And when I finished the socks, I had maybe not quite a week left of my visit in Sweden. And I was just like itching to cast something on and um, I didn't bring anything else with me. And I only had the needles that I used for those two projects. So I had a 2.25 mil sock needle and a 2.75 millimeter circular that I used for the vest. And um, mum had plenty of yarn in her stash that I could use for things. And I started looking at them and trying to figure something out. So. I did some swatching and I, I might show you that now, but that's sort of what's coming up as well. But I'll show you now. Um, I found a whole sort of sweater's worth of this yarn in my mum's stash that she had bought to make a cardigan and it didn't quite work out. So she said I could have it. So this is Sandness Garn Mini Duet and it's a Norwegian yarn and it's 55% cotton 45% merino wool and I believe it's a fingering weight and I have like eight skeins for this I think and just before going to Sweden I found out that I was one of the people that won a prize in the um, Mando Bug Crafts podcast she did a double dip cow so I entered a few items into that and um, I got drawn for one of the prizes and I was the first one to be able to choose what I wanted and I said to Mandy that I really like a, a pattern and the pattern I chose was Praline by Gudrun Johnston. And it took me a while to find this pattern. For a while I've been looking for a cardigan pattern that I think would suit me. I've been making a few cardigans that I hear they were fun to make and they look good when I look at the pattern. But then when I wear them, they're just not how I imagined. So I had a look at the cardigans in my wardrobe and figuring out what I sort of go for or what I think suits me. So I wanted a, a v-neck like what I'm wearing today really just like a simple v-neck cardigan. This one has little pockets and um, just like a, a thin cardigan similar to that. Not too long, not a lot of length to it, just sort of hip length I guess. So I searched and searched and uh, this praline one was one that came up that um, I thought I should give that a go and it might suit me. And it is a pattern from the Twist Collective. So uh, Mandy, she kindly sent that to me in Ravelry and I, I had that pattern before I went to Sweden but when mum gave me all that yarn I decided that might be a good match, so I did a little swatch 
and this is on the 275 mil needles that I had and from memory also a while ago I did this and um, this came out okay it's a nice sort of airy soft feel to it so I did swatch just in the stockinettes stitch but I should also swatch in the, the texture pattern that the, the cardigan the praline cardigan is made in but when I was swatching I thought this is just not going to work for a knitting project while I'm away and I thought I better just leave it and start it when I get back home so I just left it like that and this is in the fantastic project bag by Yvonne Ganache on Ravelry that I won from the um, Swift Knits podcast with Holly Dapp. It's been traveling with me this whole time and it's been fantastic. But that was one of the things that I swatched for and I think I will go ahead with it. I just need to do a little bit more swatching and have some time and space to, uh, to do it now that I'm at home. Another thing that I then tried to start, and I have it here in this cute project bag that my mum made for me when I was home. That's so cute. I'm very happy with it. So when I went to Riga with my husband, um, of course I wanted to see all the fabulous mittens and knitwear that they make there. And I have been watching um, the Bee Mandarin's podcast, or oh, is that the name? I think Melody. Well, she's in Riga, and I have been watching her podcast, and I saw the episode when she had been to the Mitten Workshop. And I thought, oh, I must be able to find this place. And I found so many souvenir shops that had beautiful mittens but I didn't see like the real stuff and finally on uh, just by pure accident really one day we walked out of the hotel and I just saw like a little walkway and it was a different way than we normally walked when we walked into the old city and um, walked in there and there was the place and um, I think I'll tell you more about Riga and all the amazing things I saw there in my next episode. Otherwise, this will be so long. But um, I went to that place, which is, I think, is like the largest collection of traditional um, knitwear or costumes in Northern Europe or something like that. I'll, I'll read up on it a little bit and I'll tell you more about it next time. It was amazing. And another place that I visited in um, the old city in Riga was um, a wool shop called Hobby Wool. And they had some kits for Latvian mittens. And I really, I looked at all the, um, the ones you could buy already knit in the souvenir shops and everywhere. And I thought, well, they're beautiful, but really I like to knit a pair myself because I just think it would be a fun knit. And in this hobby wool shop, they had the kits to make them. And I thought, oh, that's nice. Um, but I don't really, I wasn't completely sure about the sort of colors and pattern that they had in the kits. kits. So they also had a section of wool that you could buy. So I thought, I'll just, buy some colors and I'll find I'm sure I'll find a pattern on Ravelry I also have a mitten book that I might show you next time and I thought I'll be able to find something I'll buy some skeins of yarn and um, maybe I can start something if I find something on Ravelry so I picked up a few skeins and then I saw this big jar of par partial skeins that they were selling at I think two two euros to 100 grams and I thought well I'll, I'll get a few of those because really I just want to try this I don't need any amazing yarn I have plenty of yarn so I might be able to show you I've just got a few different colors of this and I think it's sort of like a four ply and the lady in the shop said that it's actually Estonian wool 
that had been given to them or that they have had used in some mittens so these are just like partial skeins so I got those and I was searching for patterns because I wanted to start something after I finished these socks and I did a swatch and then I realized no this is just not going to work out as travel knitting so I just frogged a swatch and put it all in this bag and I thought I'll get back to it when I get back home to Tasmania it just was not for travel knitting so that's coming up as well. I really want to make a pair of mittens, mittens um, because I was really, really inspired um, going to Riga and Latvia. So those are a couple of things that are coming up um, as a result of my trip. So I did not get anything to replace my sock, knit sock knitting, how much um, I tried so I thought I better go <laughs> and and look for some just plain sock yarn in one of the wool shops close to um, my hometown in Sweden I did go to the wool shop in my hometown and they did not they had a few things but they didn't really have anything that just like I really wanted so I went to Helsingborg in southern Sweden, which is quite close to where my family lives. It's about 20 minutes driving, I think. So I went, we went there one day. We went there to visit um, this amazing 50s diner style cafe. And I might be able to put a photo in here for, um, showing our visit there when we went for lunch. And after we went there, we had a little bit of time before going back home. So I had my sister with me, so I took her to visit one of the wool shops that I knew was close by. And there they had a bin of sock wool on sale, and probably because it's summer there, so there was not, not, a, big de not a big demand for sock wool at the moment. But I picked up a few skeins, just really to have something to start knitting for that, those last days. And also I thought I'll get something that I can't get hold of in Sweden, some sort of, some Scandinavian brand wool. And of course there's not a lot of yarn made in Scandinavia anymore. There's some, some woolen mills and they make sort of high-end yarn and some beautiful things. I do have a couple of skeins of something like that before. So I just wanted something basic, not expensive, just Something fun and interesting. And I found these TT Halti, which is a self striping, and what I've realized is a sport weight. It's made in Turkey, which I think a lot of the Scandinavian brand yarns are, but it is a Finnish brand. So I've got two skeins of this. It's 80. Percent superwash wool and 20% polymid. So I got that and it was quite a good price for them and I got two. So what I did is that I started another sock so that I would have more travel knitting. So I took this with me on a few train rides and I have photos of that so I might put them in here. started knitting this I wasn't aware of that it was a sport weight or just didn't think when I cast on so I did my normal 56 stitches a twisted rib and I've just continued but it is quite large so um, luckily for my husband I think this will end up being for him but I do like the green blues and purples in this sock yarn so yes there were my souvenir yarn from the shop. It's the shop is called Tant Tea, I think. It's in Helsingborg. I can link um, to the details in the show notes, which you can find on Rosehip Knits 
podcast.blogspot.com. And any information, like I normally say, any information about any project, I put on my Ravelry page for every project. There are notes and all the details. So yes, um, that's what I'm currently working on. And I started that um, when I was in Sweden the last few days there. And I really like that wool. And I have never seen it before. And then when I came home the day before yesterday, I was um, excited to come back to my projects that I had left um, behind. Because I just, as I said, took the little vest and the socks. I didn't want to uh, fill the bags with knitting projects because I knew mum has needles, she has yarn, and I wanted to try to find something um, to buy as well that I would not be able to find here in Australia. But I came home to my knitting projects and the first thing that I started knitting on again when I had some relaxing time, when everyone else was um, having naps, um, recovering from the flight back home, started knitting again on my raindrops by Tin Can Knits and this I am knitting out of a yarn that I hand dyed. It's a four ply fingering weight um, superwash wool and it's one that I just got at Spotlight it was on sale it's not the best quality it had a few knots in it but it's fine I really like how the, the dye came out um, and I bound off the body and I have started on the first sleeve so now it's basically like knitting a sock. <laughs> so it's really enjoyable, easy knitting. And I hope to finish that um, fairly soon. It would be nice. And I still have one skein left that I haven't caked up. And I have oh, more than 50 grams um, total of these that I'm now alternating so we'll see if well I'm, I'm sure I'll have enough yarn to complete it I'm not sure yet if I'll make the three quarter sleeves or the full length sleeves we just have to see but I'm working on that and this is in the um, bag that Erin of Holland Handmade Podcast she made for me uh, which is a fantastic bag and my socks I forgot to show you is in my acorn Chasing acorn bag <laughs> that I got from the um, Dias Notebook podcast when there was a dialogue. So that's all the knitting. That's what I have been working on and what I'm working on and things that have inspired me and that I want to start. So I'll then I have I have show notes. You might not be able to tell, but yes, I do have show notes. So I did visit a few yarn stores when I was away. The one that I have told you about in Helsingborg, Tantea, I think it's called. And um, I'll show you some other things that I got there in the Sok Yarn Bargain Bin. I got another skein of the TT Halti in a different colorway. They only had the one skein of this, but I do have things that I can use with it so I got that one and the last one that I got from the sock yarn bin there was this Lana Grossa Millenweit maybe it's called which is like a it's it's a red and light orange yellow I just um, like it. it's a bit different to anything that I have. It's color 1328 and it's 80% wool and 20% nylon. So I'll 
just a 50 gram skein, but again, I have things that I can use with it to make a pair of socks. And really, I don't need much. With these socks, I used less than 65 grams, I think. So, I mean, I have 50 grams of each of these, so I just need something for toes and heels or just make them shorter, I guess, and I can get a whole pair out of a 50 gram skein. So those are the other sock yarns that I got from that shop. And then they also had some other stuff on sale. And I just looked for something that was Scandinavian and um, that I cannot really easily get hold of here. So I got some of the Dale um, baby wool. And Dale is a Norwegian brand again. And this is so nice and soft. It's 100% merino and it's in like an aubergine purple color and I think it will just be really nice for a cow and I think it will be a good color for that. I had some the same um, yarn had some turquoise and some hot pink as well that I was choosing in between and with my sister's um, help, <laughs> I decided on the purple because it would just go with so many more things. And I have plenty of blue scarves and a lot of uh, pink <laughs> items, as you know. So, yes, this one will be a good colour for a cowl, I think. So those were the things that I got in that shop in Helsingborg. And I did only buy the, um, that Estonian wool in Riga. They didn't have a lot of things there. They had a lot of the, um, I think it was a lot of the Lana Gross. It was one of the Italian brands that they had in that shop as well. And um, nothing that I was really interested in, in getting. And I didn't buy anything in my hometown, that shop. And in Malmo, I went to one wool shop. There were a lot of shops that were closed for the summer break. I guess a lot of the yarn shops are smaller businesses run by the owner and not a lot of um, demand for wool in summer maybe so they decide to take their vacation and just close the shop for a few weeks so that happened a lot but I did uh, manage to go to one shop in Malmo and um, they didn't really have what I was looking for I wanted something that was a Scandinavian brand again even though it's not really made in Scandinavia and but it's designed there <laughs> and um, I wanted a sock wool but I wanted like a thicker sock wool which I then realized that this was um, but I had seen some online but they didn't stock those anywhere um, but I did find a really thick sock yarn, and this is Yerbu Gone, which is Swedish. But also, I think, made in Turkey. I don't know if it says. No, it doesn't say, but I'm sure it's possibly from Turkey. It's 70% wool and 30% polymid, and this is like a really, really, uh, really thick. I think it says. 18 to 19 stitches on a 10 centimeter swatch with a 4.5 to 5 millimeter needle so you can imagine it's really really thick it's 100 grams and um, with advice from the <laughs> the man in the shop I should be able to make one pair of socks my size from this skein I just thought it was they were fun colors but this brand Yabu also make a raggy sock yarn in a, a thin weight and in a sort of middle weight but they didn't stock those unfortunately otherwise that would have been what I want to buy they did have like a cotton sock yarn in a thinner weight but no I didn't want that I got that one and then these were the last skeins that I got from the shop in Malmo and it's called Salida and he did say that it's a Danish brand, but it does not have a lot of information on the ball band. 75% wool, 25% polyamide, 210 meters per 50 grams. 
and that's about it and um, yes they're a nice light color so that will make a pair of socks as well so they're the things they're my souvenir <laughs> yeah and I'm happy with all those I'll add them to my stash and um, hopefully make something out of them soon okay as it seems like my little one is still <clears throat> sorry still happily sleeping outside in the sunshine I can move on from all the knitting and yarn to some of my traveling Um, I hope the episode is okay and not too not organized <laughs> and structured. I am still getting used to this again, but it's I'm so happy to be back and recording. It's great. I've um, had so many things to tell you about, and now I probably forget most of them. But anyway, um, the traveling, what I have been doing since last time I recorded. So um, the trip over to Sweden was pretty ordinary. As you can remember, I had quite a bad cough. The rest of my family also caught a cough and um, my husband was not feeling very well on the plane to Sweden and the girls both were coughing and I, I was okay but I was still tired from being sick so yes we struggled a bit on the way over but the girls they were just doing so well considering we had people come up to us after the flights um, saying that we did really well with the girls and they were behaving really well so that's just that's always so nice to hear so I recommend if you ever on a plane with um, parents and little children and you think they're doing well, you know, let them know because it is such a stressful experience, experience to travel with little ones and you always feel like you're annoying to everyone else. So when people come up to you and say that, you know, you did a great your job, um, it just makes it mm, so, just so nice, just Yes, it makes you feel so much better after all the stress and being so nervous about things. So, yes, do that if that is ever something that happens to you. So we got to Sweden in the end and um, had a week of recovering from being sick and from the jet lag and just changing environment. So the first week we were just in my hometown and spending lots of time with family and um relaxing, just de-stressing and um, I was enjoying having Sweden all around me, Swedish language, Swedish food, Swedish TV, just everything, the, the plants, the flowers, the houses, everything, I was just sort of enjoying because I have had not been back for three years and um, Yes, it was just fantastic. And then we started doing a few trips. We wanted to go and visit a few places with the children. So we went to an animal park one day. We went to went to Malmo and went to a few fantastic playgrounds that they have there. I might put photos in. And we went to Lund, another city close by, and um, like I have said, we went to Helsingborg. One day, my husband took my eldest on the ferry to Hels Helsingor in Denmark. It is a 20-minute ferry from Helsingborg to Helsingor, so you can just go back and forth. And they didn't even go um, get off the ferry to go to Helsingor. We've been many times before, and they just my husband just wanted to give my my daughter's experience of being on a ferry because it's not really something we do back home. 
So we just did lots of little day trips and for about half of the day trips we left the children with my mum and they were very happy to be with her. She had her house perfectly set up for, for hosting them and uh, towards the end my eldest daughter actually spent most of the nights with my mum as well. She just moved into her <laughs> to her place. So uh, yes, they had a fantastic time both um, visiting new places but also just being home relaxing with my family. And we had some nice time just being um, the two of us, me and my husband, and it was also a great time to show the girls new places and see them experiencing new things. It was great. And um, we did uh, take off and we went to Riga and um, the girls were happy with mum again. And um, like the second last day, we went to Copenhagen for a day, just me and my husband, because the weather was not the best and we decided we wanted to go on a day that you know, at least it would not be raining and it just happened to be that it was the second last day that we could go. So we did that, we've been many times before, it's just a nice place to go when you've traveled that far um, and you're in the area anyway because it's only about an hour from my hometown, hour, hour and a half, no probably about an hour, you just get on the train and you just go all the way and over the bridge to Denmark and you're in Copenhagen and um, yes it's a large city, different culture a little bit and um, just a nice place to walk around. So yes, it was just a wonderful family holiday that also included some child-free time. Weather was not the best, as I said, we had one day on the beach, but um, it was still lovely. We were able to go around bicycles a lot and um, it was just fantastic spend time with my sister and my family and I caught up with a few friends that took quite a bit of um, the time as well just um, day trips to go and visit friends and uh, yes it was great and um, Yes, it's, it's nice to be back home again. It is. It is very nice to be um, with our own things and our lovely house, our beautiful garden. And I was, everyone had been telling me that it's so cold, so cold. It's been, you know, it's cold as it's been for years and years and years in Tasmania. But um, since we've been back, the sun has been out every day. There's daffodils and snowdrops and everything in the garden is green. So I think it's been nice. It's um yes, winter here is just really wonderful. So I think that this episode would get too long if I don't uh, finish this up soon. I do want to say though that being back home was really great. It's a really relaxing feeling for me. And I'm sure it doesn't matter like where you're from, just going back home to an environment that you're familiar with and that you grew up in, it just gives you a nice comfortable feeling. To me Sweden just seemed very comfortable, very logic and organised <laughs> and um, I just love the public transport and how it works so well. I love the houses and how they're built and how comfortable they are and um, the just infrastructure and of course I love the food I love all the options with bread and dairy and um, yes it's just a really comfortable place for me to be and of course it's probably because it's where I grew up and other people might not feel the same way when they go to Sweden but that's um, the feeling that I get when I'm there. Anyway, 
it's time to say goodbye and please if you have any questions if you want to send me a message do so um, easiest way is probably by a PM on Ravelry I'm also very happy when you um, contact me on Instagram any comments on the YouTube video is fantastic and yes we're close to 100 members on the Ravelry group so if you want to be part of that uh, please come and join thank you everybody and um, thank you for all of you who have been watching while I've been away on my pre-recorded episode episodes um, thank you I'm sure I forgot 95% of the things that I have been wanting to tell you all but um, maybe they'll come to me later and I can tell you in future episodes so take care everyone I'm so happy to be back thank you for watching take care